Hi, Adele. Thanks for agreeing to do a short interview with us today. So maybe you could explain first what you do here at Livermut and who you are. Hi, uh, thank you for asking me to do this interview for you. Um, I'm Adele Modar. I'm the Deputy Manager for the Kangaroo for Lovenwoods in South Africa. What I do here is all of the, the pedagogic work in the home. So taking a child holistically and working out an individual education plan for them to get them to, to develop into their full potential, helping them with life skills, eating, toilet training, um, those basic type of things. The team at Yaiba is currently trying to raise money to finance a baby saver here at, uh, at Livermore in South Africa. So maybe you could explain why a baby saver is so important and how many there are currently already in South Africa. So baby savers in South Africa is not a new concept to us. It started more than 10 years ago. Currently, we have only 34 baby savers in South Africa. The reason for the baby savers is that in South Africa, we have, um, you can call it a pandemic um, of abandonment. So it's very difficult to say how many children every year gets abandoned because one out of every three children that is found that is abandoned is found alive. So many more is found dead and many more are not found ever at all. So currently the statistics say that it is 3,500 babies abandoned every year in South Africa. And I feel that 35, 34 baby savers are not nearly enough to save the baby's lives in South Africa. Yeah, we definitely agree with you there. So the team of Yaba was able to raise already around uh, 3,000 euro so far for, for the baby savers. So do you know the overall estimated cost? So the total cost for the baby saver in South Africa is about 170,000 rand. So that is about 10,000 euro. Um, for someone who doesn't know about the procedure and everything, that sounds quite high. So maybe can you explain like how these costs are come together? You are right. That does sound a little high, but it is not as simple as just building a box and placing it in, in a fence or into a wall you will first have to identify a specific place in our fencing to build a wall where we can place this box inside. So currently in South Africa, there's only two companies that actually manufacture baby saver boxes. It is quite a technical, very specialized type of baby saver box that needs to be done. It needs to be done. So there's a company in Cape Town and then there's one company in Johannesburg. So it is, it is quite difficult to find the proper one. So the box is made out of stainless steel so that it is weather resistant, it doesn't rust. On the inside of the box, you will find a pressure plate, um, intraviolet light, some magnets, and also some um, security system and a small camera. So the reason for the pressure plate is once the mommy opens the door and she places the baby on the pressure plate, the silent alarm goes off in our home to notify us that there is a baby in the box. At the same time, the light will come on and the camera will com come on. So the light is just to repeat to the baby. The camera is just for us to see that there is a baby in the box. Um, it's not to look at who is placing the baby in the box as the mommy is placing it anonymously. It's just also for, for us to see that there is actual baby in the box and then the moment the mommy closes the box you can't open it from the outside so then the magnets will trigger so then about two minutes time we give for the mom to go away and then you will come out of the house and take the baby so the inside of the box has a lot of security systems a lot of technical techno things um, that is what is making it so expensive we need to be linked with a security company in case that we take too long and we have a power failure so that the alarm can go off at the security company as well. So that is basically the, the high cost is all of the technical things um, and also we need to be linked with a proper security company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that makes sense now. So earlier you showed us the place you chose where the baby saver will be put. So why did you choose that exact place? We chose that specific place in our fence. Um, the street is not as busy. 
there's no street lights there and it's very close to the exit of our Lovenmoot hospice wing so when the alarm does go off the the staff can go immediately out of the the back emergency door and within a few meters they are at the box and also behind the fence where i showed you was a big bush and there's also an empty field so it gives the mommy a chance to to hide away or just to to move a little bit away out of sight just to make sure that someone is hearing the alarm and someone is coming to get the baby just to, to give a little bit of reassurance and it also makes it covers her so that it's not out in the open if someone drives past that she can still stay anonymous so what will to happen to the baby once it is found in the baby saver so the moment the mommy places the baby in the baby saver when the alarm goes off we have about two minutes to to get there then our professional nurse would take the baby inside our home into a very specialized room that we will have to make for for the babies she has to check the baby to see that there is no big medical concern um, if the child needs to go to the hospital immediately otherwise the child will stay with us then we are working with a company called Impilo. So Impilo is a social organization that works with abandoned babies. Because we as Lovenmoot work with disabled children and abandoned children fall under another government department, they will then come within 24 hours to collect the baby from us. They will do all the logistics, go to the police station, open up a case, um, put an article in the newspaper to, to say that we found the baby this place, this time, in case there's relatives or someone looking for the baby. They will take the baby to home affairs to get the child a um, birth certificate, get the clinic card with the first injections, and then they will go and look for a safe place for this baby until they can get adopted. So what are the next steps to bring the baby saver to life? So for us to bring the baby saver to life, we would first have to place the order for the baby saver, the box, um, which will take about three to six months to just manufacture. So in that, in the meantime, we also need to use the money that we will get from the 170,000 to upgrade our sick bay, just to, to make sure that we are equipped to take premature um, newborn babies. So that would be the first step then we would need to go to the different departments of our government just to inform them that we will be opening up the baby saver. We need to go to our police station, to the station commander to let them know as well, and our community. So, and then we need to start advertising, going to clinics, going to schools, letting everyone in the community know that we have this baby saver, that there is a saver option for the, the mommies to actually leave their babies. And also just to to make sure that that everyone is on board and that there's not someone that does not like the idea or doesn't know of the idea so it will be first it will be a lot of advertising and speaking to communities speaking to all of the departments before we can actually start everything so thank you so much today for taking the time to explain the process for, to us so we know how it's going to work and we definitely uh, will do our best uh, at yalva to raise that money as soon as possible so we can get started well from our side from northern Roots, thank you very much yalva for taking this interest in opening up a baby saver in south africa and taking hands with us with this big dream that we have to to help south africa babies save babies and to give them the opportunity to a future and a proper life we looking forward to to working with with yalva in the future so thank you thank you